Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide and uh, one thing if you've noticed I've changed the channel a little bit more and I've also changed the logo of our channel so it looks something like that. Well, yeah, it looks something like that and I've hand drawn it. Eh. The reason why I'm mentioning this is that this video is going to be really short, it's just going to be two problems. so. I have to add something else to make it, you know, be longer to watch, I guess. Uh, uh, I hope you guys uh, like this new logo. I spent a, some time drawing it on my own because I couldn't find someone to draw it for me. And I'm not really the best artist out there. But uh, anyways, I'm just going to move on to our problems for this video, which is number 17, section number 5 of test number 3. So... They give us this ruler, and I have taken the time to actually draw it in color instead of black and white. So, it says, One, e one end of an 80-inch long paper strip is shown in the figure above. The notched edge, shown in bold, was formed by removing an equilateral triangle from the end of each 4-inch four le four length on one edge of the paper strip. What is the total length in inches of the bold notched edge on the 80 inch paper strip? So the problem itself says that every 4 inches that triangle was cut out. So the total number of times a triangle was cut out from an 80 feet long strip like this, if it's every 4 inches, is 20. So the pattern repeats itself 20 times total. So we need to find the length of the bold notched edge, which is this blue line, this dark blue, rather. So we know that one pattern consists of four inches if we weren't to count the notched part. But since we are counting the notched part, this one isn't counted at all, because really there's nothing there if you cut it out already. So that's why I put green dashed lines. So if an equilateral triangle is cut out, and that's one inch, then this is one inch, and so is this. So after every pattern, each pattern's length is five inches. And if the pattern repeats itself 20 times, we get the length of the bold notched edge as 100 inches, and that's the correct answer. And now we're going to be doing the final one, which is the reason why I didn't put all of this in the other video. Number 18, it's a parabola, so I'm going to draw that right here, like so, and the y-axis is toward the, no, that's the x, there's the y-axis, and the parabola looks, uh, not like that, uh, tilt, tilt, uh, a very weird parabola indeed, but that's a, uh, perfect parable on the in the book I will assure you that this is point Q this is point R and there's a rectangular figure drawn okay and that's the origin this is point P this is point S so in the figure above uh, PQRS is a square okay so all of the sides are equal and points Q, R, and O lie on the graph of Y equals AX squared, where A is a constant. If the area of the square is 64, what is the value of A? Well, if the area of the square is equal to 64, the area of a square is equal to A squared. Therefore, uh, that's A squared. That's not technically A if we're going to use calculations like that. So A will be, which is the side length of the square. I, I, I shouldn't be using A, really. A is already a constant. Let's call this B, I guess. B is equal to B square in the sense that B is the square. This is very confusing. Uh, I shouldn't be doing the problem like this. Rather, let's just say the area of the square is 64. The side lengths are going to be the square root of 64 which is 8, and that was much more easier. Okay, so the length of this is 8, this is 8, 
And now, here comes the vital part of the problem. Well, one of the vital parts. Since the square touches the para parabola on both sides of the vertex of it, so the, the lengths are equal since the vertex is on the origin and the square touches the parabola on both sides of the vertex, we know that these two lengths are also equal. And we know that their total is 8, so 8 divided by 4 is just 4. No, 8 divided by 2, my, my apologies, that, it's still 4. That's the point I'm trying to make. Now, now you're saying, well, what do you do now? So, the equation is y is equal to ax squared. Well, like another previous problem we did, instead of trying to graph uh, find the values of every single point and do backwards graphing what you can just do is let's find the point r point r is equal to an x value of 4 and a y value of 8 so you could just plug those in in here so y is equal to 8 8 is equal to a times 4 squared that square is supposed to be inside okay so 8 times 4 squared so 8 is equal to 16a, 16a is equal to 8, and a is equal to 8 divided by 16, or half, or 0 0.5. It's either one of these two. It depends on your preferences of fractions and decimals. So that's just about it for this, uh, this problem, and that's about it for section five uh, the next math section will be section number I'm guessing eight because it's been eight all the time yes it is still section eight as usual I think it's as usual at least as far as my memory goes so I hope this helped you with your math preparation your SAT preparation most importantly and uh, yes I will see you in the next video new logo it looks so nice. I'll see you in the next video.